Algebra 2, Unit 7, Lesson 1, End Behavior and Linear Factors. In this lesson, we want to look at the end behavior of a polynomial, determine the zeros of a polynomial when it's in factored form, and then use those features to sketch the graph of the polynomial. So we've seen how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide polynomial expressions, but what's a polynomial function? So that's when we have the y variable is equal to a polynomial expression. Where these numbers, a, the a's in front, are real number coefficients, and the x are our variable to the different powers, where it's called an nth degree polynomial if this is the largest one that's there. If the largest one is just a constant, then that's just a y-intercept and it's a horizontal line. If it has an x term in just this, then it's a linear function. If it has a squared term, it's a quadratic. If it's a third, the largest is a third term, it's a cubic and so on. But all polynomial functions have one of four types of end behavior. Either both ends go up, both ends go down, or one goes up and one goes down. This particular behavior can be found by looking at this leading term, the one with the highest degree and its leading coefficient. We're going to look at the power of the leading term. Is it even or odd? And we're going to look at the sign of the leading coefficient as positive or negative. So when this number n is even, either both ends go up together or both ends go down together. And if n is odd, one end goes up and one end goes down. This leading term, if it's a positive number, the right side will go up, and if it's negative, the right side will go down. So that gives us the following. If n is even and we have the leading term positive, so meaning it's a second degree, fourth degree, sixth degree, and so on, and that leading coefficient is a positive, then they will both go up, and if that leading coefficient is negative, they will both go down. When n is odd, now one will go up and one will go down, so if the leading coefficient is positive, then the right end will go up and the left end will go down. If that leading coefficient is negative, the right end will go down and the left end will go up. Of course, odd degrees mean things like three, five, seven, and so on. So now if we look at the end behavior of these, this is f of x equals minus x cubed plus x plus five. The largest one is this, that's an odd degree. So one end has to go up and one end down. Because this is a negative, the right end will go down and the left end will go up. Two x to the fifth minus three x squared plus nine x is also an odd degree. So one end goes up and one end goes down because this is a positive leading coefficient, the right end goes up the left end goes down. 3x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus 6. This is an even degree polynomial, and therefore both ends will either go up together or down together. Because this is a positive coefficient, both ends will go up. Every polynomial function of degree 2 or higher has at least one extrema, meaning a minimum or a maximum. That minimum or maximum may be absolute, meaning the greatest or least in the whole domain, or relative, the greatest or least in just some small part of that domain. Another important feature of a polynomial function are zeros, meaning where it crosses the x-axis. So if we look at a particular graph like this, the relative minimum and maximum are at the peaks and the valley. So this is like a valley of the function, so that's a relative minimum. This is like a peak of a mountain, so that's a relative maximum. And where it crosses the x-axis, those are the zeros. Because we have one end going up and one end going down, it has to be an odd degree polynomial. And because the right end is going down, that means that the leading coefficient had to be negative. Polynomial functions can be factored into linear factors for their real roots, and we'll see later also for their imaginary roots. If you have a number in front of it like this, these are really linear factors in disguise because you can factor out that beginning number. So this would be 2 times the quantity x minus a half is the same as 2x minus 1, and 3x plus 5 is the same with the 3 out in the front, and then times the quantity x plus 5 over 3. So if a polynomial is factored into its linear factors, it's easy to identify the zeros. So you simply look at the linear factors and find out what would make that zero, it will be the opposite sign of what you have here. So this is subtracting a half, so the zero would be a positive a half. And for this one, it's a plus 5 thirds in there, so the zero would be a negative 5 over 3. 
If we can find the zeros, the y-intercept and the n-behavior, we can use those to sketch the graph of the polynomial. And I'll just note that if we want the leading coefficient and we have it in factored form, we just need to multiply all the beginning parts of the different things, where, is the num where the number out in front works as both leading and end, and then the constant term is all the end parts multiplied together. So the leading term would be 3 times x times x times x times x, or 3x to the fourth, as I've mentioned here, because this is an even degree, they'll either both go up together or down together. This is positive, so the right end goes up, therefore the left end will also go up. Here we can tell the zeros, they're minus 6, minus 2, 1, and 4, which I have graphed here. I knew that the function had to at least touch at those. And then because the end behavior is here, it will pass through each of those zeros and then go up. Where the higher low point tends to be between, almost evenly between, not exactly, but almost evenly between the zeros. So this one, the midpoint is about here. It would go up there a little bit further. So the y-intercept is not the maximum point. Instead, we can mark this. How would we know what the y-intercept is? Either you can put 0 into the function, or you can multiply 3 times 6 times 2 times negative 1 times negative 4, which is the same you would get by putting in 0, because those are the end parts of each factor.